Hi, I'm Kathy Johnson from Pyramid of Potential. Welcome to the uh, Harnessing Learning Potential video series. And today is lesson 55060, and we're talking about accommodations. This is a, su a tough subject, so I want you to consider what I'm saying with an open mind. So you see, accommodations are given to our students who have difficulties in school. And we're giving them to them so that they can be successful in school. Okay? We give them to them so their grades will go up, their test scores will go up, and they can be successful in school. The number one accommodation today is extended time. And everybody's happy because of those grades and scores going up. However, the day that student graduates, that, that student has to go out and get a job. I'm an employer, and I'm really sorry, but I'm a typical employer. And I cannot hire somebody, no matter how smart they are, if they're going to take 50% longer to do the same task as somebody else. You see, in the real world out there, time is money. Okay? We want our students to be successful, whether it's our own children or the children that we're teaching. Our goal is for them to eventually be successful. There's no question about that. But if we hold them back by only giving them accommodations, then we're holding them back in life. And through this video series, I've been talking about a lot of different ways to improve the brain so that accommodations eventually will no longer be needed. Do we need them right now? Probably. But let's be looking for the future when we no longer need them. So let's go through a list of accommodations as given by the Understood website. These are common modifications and accommodations. And I want you to think about how many of these do you want your students and your own children to still carry with them into the workplace? And how successful will they be if they have to tell their new boss that this is the only way that they're going to be able to do their job. Okay, there's a lot of them. First are presentation accommodations, which allow the student to, say, listen to audio recordings instead of reading text. Learn content from audiobooks, movies, videos, and digital media instead of reading print versions. Work with fewer items per page or line and or materials in a larger print size. Have a designated reader. Hear instructions orally. Record a lesson instead of taking notes. Have another student share class notes with him. Be given an outline of a lesson. Use visual presentations of verbal material such as word webs and visual organizers be given a written list of instructions. Here are some response accommodations. They allow the students to give responses in a form, oral or written, that's easier for them. Dictate answers to a scribe. Capture responses on an audio recorder. Use a spelling dictionary or electric, electronic spell checker. Use a word processor to type notes or give responses in class. Use a calculator or a table of math facts. There are some setting accommodations. They allow the student to work or take a test in a different setting, such as a quiet room with few distractions. Sit where he learns best, for example, near the teacher. Use special lighting or acoustics. Take a test in a small group setting. Use sensory tools, such as an exercise band that can be looped around a chair's legs so fidgety kids can kick it and quietly get their energy out. There are timing accommodations, such as take more time to complete a ta task or test, have extra time to process oral information and directions, take frequent breaks, such as after completing a task, scheduling accommodations, are things like take more time to complete a project, take a test in several time sessions over several days, 
take sections of a test in a different order. Take a test at a specific time of day. Some organization skills accommodations are use an alarm to help with time management. Mark tests with a highlighter. Have help coordinating assignments in a book or planner. Receive study skills instruction. Some assignment modifications are complete fewer or different homework problems than peers. Write shorter papers. Allow fewer or different test questions. Create alternative projects or assignments. And finally, some curriculum modifications. Learn different material, such as continuing work on multiplication while everybody else moves on to fractions. Get graded or assessed using a different standard than the ones for the classmates. And finally, simply be excused from particular projects. So I ask you, do you want your child to have to carry these into, into a job? I'm sure you would say no. So let's go back. Let's learn what we can do. I've been working for the last 15 years. I've gotten several children out of special ed and onto the honor roll to become successful people in the job of their choice. So it's possible we can do it. Thanks.